Good afternoon, everybody. Phil Simons with Columbia Grain here in your Friday afternoon weekly grain market recap. Well, this week did have quite a bit of activity involved with it as we did have the monthly uh, supply and demand report come out from the USDA on Wednesday this week. Really not a whole heck of a lot to really decipher in that report and really not much of a market driver. Uh, today, we did have a little bit of, of activity primarily in the wheat pits more than anything as what could be really viewed as more of a, of a short covering rally. Uh, than anything else, but coupled along with continued concern over uh, the continued drought conditions that we're continuing to see in a lot of the breadbasket area uh, in the U.S., primarily in that Oklahoma, Nebraska, and Texas area. But let's go ahead and take a look at uh, at our at our favorite website again, ColumbiaGrain.com. Again, if we navigate to the upper right-hand corner to the Producer Solutions tab, we can take a look and see what the week uh, had to provide for us here. Uh, so again, just taking a look and see what the overall weekly price action was. Again, starting on the left side which, with uh, Chicago corn, a really kind of a muted week there. Uh, the, the weekly range came in at 13 cents. We were actually able to close the week with a net gain of 3 cents in corn. Uh, beans, we actually had a weekly range of 38 cents. We we're actually able to close the week out with a net gain uh, of 10 cents over there. Then when we turn a page and take a look at the wheat complex, we can see that the weekly range in Kansas uh, was, a, was a staggering 44 cents once again, and the weekly change was actually up 37 cents week on week. Uh, so and again, when we take a look at Chicago wheat up next, we can see the weekly range there was 46 cents, and the weekly change was up 28 cents week on week. Uh, lastly, if we take a look at Minneapolis, we can see that the weekly range was 21 cents here, and with a net weekly change of a gain of 11 cents in Minneapolis wheat. So again, prime example, you know, really of the importance of having your orders out there and working uh, because the knee-jerk reactions that we're seeing right now and that we have been seeing are, are continuing to stick around. And again, as we mentioned earlier, uh, today could be definitely viewed as, a, as more of a short covering rally. But again, when we take a look at what the drought monitor index continues to show us, Really, a lot of that, uh, a lot of that area centered in that breadbasket of the U.S. and Texas, Oklahoma, and Nebraska is continuing to stay in a severe drought uh, right now. So again, just continuing to watch that and monitor it to see if we do see any chance of participation, um, precipitation anyway, <laughs> into that area of the U.S. to help alleviate some of those concerns. But as of right now, um, you know that's pretty much what we're looking at. So again, just the importance of getting your orders out there and working. Uh, so that you do are able to take advantage of these knee-jerk reactions that we continue to see uh, in, in really all commodities, not just wheat, but corn and beans as well. Take a look at your cash contracts, look at basis contracts, look at hedge to arrives, uh, minimum price contracts as well, something that you at least just take a look at. So again, get a hold of your local Columbia Grain merchandiser and get your orders out there and working. Other than that, that's about it. We'll wrap it up. Have a great weekend, everybody. And remember that if you can drink it, don't trade it. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll talk with you next week.